What I want to do now is I want to take a look at the grid and some of the options uh, available from the grid and from your search results. And then we'll come up and take a look at the map and some of the mapping options that are available there as well. And that should uh, take us to the end of our session. Um, so what I'm going to do at this point, let me actually hide the map up here. So I'm going to click on the grid section down here, which is going to make my grid larger and hide my map. And I'm also going to double click over here on this little divider like we did at the beginning of class. And that's going to hide everything over there on the left hand side. So we can, we can just work with our grid at this point. So I want to show you some of the things that you can do from your grid down here. You, again, you don't have to maximize your grid to do all this stuff. I just like to do it so we can see more fields at one time here. Um, but you'll see here, like we talked earlier, all the indicator columns out here to the left for the photos, the MLS status, the foreclosure, and the uh, distress sales. Um, any of these fields that you see in your columns, um, you can reorder them simply by clicking and dragging them around. So if you want you know, a subdivision to be the first thing in your list, just take it and move it over in front of address and drop it. And it'll stay, it'll stay that way from that point forward. So any changes that you make to your grid will also save for any of your future logins. All you got to do is just move them around, drop them where you want them, um, and then it'll, it'll leave them there for your future logins. Okay. Um, if you want to uh, make any other changes to your grid, um, you can maximize or minimize these columns here. So if you want to uh, shrink or expand the columns, all you got to do is click and drag on them uh, to move them around. Okay. Um, if you want to sort by any of the columns here, for example, maybe you want to sort by zip code, you just come up there next to zip code and you'll see the little one with an arrow there. Go ahead and just click and that'll sort by that particular field to start out with. Okay. If you want to sort within that field by another field, maybe you want to sort by uh, you know address or uh, recording date or sale date, um, you, know, you can do multi-tiered sorts here. So you can sort by any of these other fields. And each time you click on a field there, you're just adding another tiered sort to that, uh, to that field. Okay, so there's my second tier, there's my third tier, fourth, so on and so forth. If, I, if you want to clear out your um, sorting at any point, you can come down to the bottom and there's an Edit Grid button. You just click Edit Grid and then click Clear Column Sorting. And that'll clear your columns back out and take them back to the default sort. Also, down there at the bottom in that edit grid field, you see the ability to show or hide columns. This is where you can determine exactly what fields are going to be displayed on your grid. So if you want to take fields out, if you want to add other fields in, you can come down here and click on the show hide columns button. Similar earlier when we were building a search form, you'll have the same type of list here of fields that you can include or, or take out. Again, they're categorized over here on the left by category, so you can quickly find what you're looking for. So if I wanted to add uh, you know, pool to my list here, I could check pool off. Um, it'll put it over here on the list on the, the right-hand side. I could take that if I wanted to click and drag it and move it around and put it in a particular place. And then I could go ahead and do that and then click apply. Okay, so now I should have pool out there next to my bedrooms and bathrooms. Okay, there it is. If I wanted to take that back out, again, just go into Edit Grid, Show Hide Columns, come over here and find Pool, and just exit out. All right. And then just make sure you apply your changes, and that'll change the grid. Okay. You'll also notice over here on the left, they're all selected by default. Um, if you want to deselect them all, you can simply check the box at the top, and then you can come in and simply choose the ones that you're working with. Um, to, uh, to select just those specific ones. Okay. Um, down there at the bottom in that same button there, that Edit Grid button, if you've selected individual properties that you want to work with and you want to get rid of all the other ones, there's a toggle in here where you can toggle between to show only the selected rows or to restore the full results list. So if I show only the selected rows, then it's going to get rid of all those other um, options that I didn't check off and it's going to leave just those that I did. And if I want to restore that list, I haven't, you know, I haven't gotten rid of those search results. They're just hidden. If I want to restore the full list, just click the restore option from that edit grid button. So a lot of things you can do down here via the edit grid option in the lower uh, center portion of the screen. Okay. We talked about earlier about opening up the reports. If you want to view the reports, you can simply check them off and then click view reports and it'll open up any of them that you have checked off. Or you can simply double click on any of those properties and it'll open up those uh, properties as well. Okay. 
you do have the ability out here to the right of that to print a property detail report of up to 25 properties at a time. So if you have less than 25 of these selected, this button will be available and you can quickly print out up to 25 property reports at a time without having to go in and open up each individual property report. If you have more than 25 selected, so for example, if I check off all of these, you'll notice the button will gray out down there and you won't have the ability to, uh, to print those out. Okay. And then the next couple options down here, labels and export. If you want to create mailing labels or if you want to export this data out to a spreadsheet, um, this is how you'll do it. It works a little differently than it did in Classic, whereas you're not going to have um, the, the separate export manager to go to. So when you do your labels and when you do your export, it just works right there on the fly. So if I want to create labels for all of these properties, I can just come down here and click Create Labels, make sure I've got them all checked off, click Create Labels. It'll go ahead and open up the label window there where you're going to choose what label type you want to print them on, uh, 5160, 5161, or 5162 with the USPS barcode. You can use mixed case or capital letters. There's some different things you can do down here to customize these, whether you want to use the tax billing address or the actual property address, of course, is up to you. Um, do you want to show the current owner? Do you want to include foreign addresses? Do you want to eliminate duplicate labels? Perhaps you have investors who own multiple properties and you'd like to eliminate the duplicate labels, or you can also create custom labels down there at the bottom. So, so you're going to do all that right there from the little window that pops up, and then out here to the right, it'll show you how many exports you have allowed this month, how many you've currently exported this month, and then how many you have remaining in that, uh, uh, for that monthly count. So you have up to 7,500 per month, um, and then it'll tell you how many you've done and how many you've got left and how many you're about to export in that current export. If you only want to export a specific range um, of those records, maybe you had pulled up 200 properties and you only wanted to do the first 50, then you can do a print range from 1 to 50, and it would only create the labels for those particular properties. Okay. Once you click Create here, it's going to go ahead and create that then in a Word document, and then you can go ahead and save that Word document. You can print it out. You can do whatever you want to. Um, you know, Once you've printed that uh, Word document out, save that and use it however you want to use it on your, uh, on your own computer. So that's the, uh, the labels option. Keep in mind, uh, because there's no export manager anywhere, once you do an export, it's not saved. You can't go back and pull it up later. You just have to do that export again. So uh, you know, I'd recommend, for example, labels. If you're going to print these labels out, go ahead and print them out. Um, once you've got that Word document open on your computer, go ahead and save that Word document somewhere to your hard drive, whether that's a, um, you know, your, your documents or your desktop or whatever. Make sure you save that, because if you have to come back and do it again, it's going to count again towards your monthly limit. Uh, to do those labels. Okay. Same thing for your exports. Um, if you want to export the data directly out to a spreadsheet, you click the export option down there. You've got two options. You can do a grid or a customized. Um, if you only want to export exactly what's showing here on the grid, then just do the grid option and that'll export it out to a grid. If you want to do a customized export, click the customize button here. And this is where you'll be able to come in and, and choose all of the individual fields that you actually want to export. So you know, maybe you want to export some owner information as well as some location information and some assessment data. You can come in and pick and choose those different fields over here on the left. Okay. You'll check those off. It'll populate those over here on the right. And then you can come down here and do the export. And again, you'll get a count down here of how many uh, exports you have left for the month how many you're currently exporting, and how many you have already exported. Okay. One of the nice things down here is you can actually save uh, exports. So, uh, And by save exports, I don't mean you're actually saving the data that you're exporting, but you're actually saving a template. So what you can do is you can come in here and create basically a, an export template and then save it. I'll just call this one template. Give it a name. Call it whatever you want to call it, and then click Save and it'll go ahead and add that to your list of your saved template exports. So um, later on, if you want to do that same export, you don't have to spend time to come in here and choose all those fields again. You can simply just come in here and load up that template, and it'll populate those fields up there automatically. So again, it's not saving the actual data, but it's saving the template of the fields that you're including in your export. Okay. And when you're ready, go ahead and just click Export, and it'll pop that out into a spreadsheet. All right, let me delete that template I have.